Now that we have our markup and most of our CSS done, we're ready to finish this project. Now let's start focusing on the content. So again, I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this flag to go ahead and start a new section. In this case, we'll call it content. And we want to first select our content div and float it to the left. We'll give it a width of about 900 pixels. We want it to have some margin on the bottom of about 40 pixels. And next, we want to style our product image. We'll float that to the left as well. And we're going to add a box shadow here just to give it a little bit more contrast with the rest of the page. And I'm going to copy and paste that and just change the vendor prefix here from WebKit to Moz so it works in Firefox as well. And when I switch back and refresh, you can see that we now have a nice box shadow around our image and our content is side by side with the image. The image we're using comes first in the markup before the paragraph text. By using floated elements, we can put the image to the left and still maintain semantic markup a screen reader will pick up on the alt tag in the image before it starts reading the text, which in this case is exactly what we want. Now let's increase the size of all of this about text. So I'm going to switch back here and we're going to select the about div and we'll increase the font size on that. We'll give it a width of about 500 pixels margin of 20 pixels and again we want to float that to the left we'll select our tagline float that left we'll make it bold and we want to give it some margin to the right because this is going to be pushing up against the large buy now button so let's style the buy now button we want that to have a large font size as well. And we want to give it some padding so that it's nice and clickable. So we'll switch back and refresh. And you can see that we now have this text to the left and our buy now button here. Using nice large fonts like this will help users with mild low vision. And again, creating a nice large button like this will improve usability for individuals that have difficulty using a mouse with high precision. The tagline, the new widget, just $10, is floated to the left of the button. This keeps the markup in a natural order for screen readers and still allows us to lay out the page how we want it to appear visually. Now let's finish up and style the table down at the bottom. So I'm just going to, again, make some room here. And I'm going to scroll up the page here so that we can copy and paste this flag one more time and we're going to call this one table because this will contain all of our table stylings. Now first I just want to give that table description paragraph some bold text there and I want to center it right above the table as well. We want it to spread across the entire page and we want the font size to be a little bit larger than the default and we want the T head to have a slightly gray background color. We'll give it a white font and we want to align the text left. Now we want to style the th and td tags and for those we're just going to add some padding and finally just to our tds we want to give them a nice blue background color so we'll switch back and refresh and scroll down and take a look at this table and as you can see, this table features large fonts like the rest of the site, 
But the thing I'd like you to notice in this case is the high contrast. Even in grayscale, the text in table cells would be very clearly defined. Creating strong contrast like this is important because it improves accessibility for individuals with different degrees of color blindness. Now, in closing, this is a pretty bare bones design and it could be taken much further, but hopefully this exercise helped you understand how semantic markup can be styled with CSS and still remain accessible. Remember, when creating web pages, you should never stop thinking about accessibility from the initial designs all the way through to the very end.